Shalom. I hope that you're doing well today. It's a beautiful morning here in Georgia. Uh, hopefully I can get through this message without a lot of uh, lawnmowers and stuff in the background. <laughs> but um, the study that I'm going to share with you today is on uh, what scripture says about a stiff neck and a hardened heart. And uh, it's, a, it's a long um, study. So stick with me. It might be about 30 minutes or so. Um, I have about nine pages of notes here. I'm going to go through scripture, um, read that, and then speak a little on um, what the definitions are um, spiritually and physically. So my disclaimer is I am not a teacher. I am only a student of the greatest teacher. And uh, he's allowed me to come up to the chalkboard <laughs> uh, to share my study notes with you. So um, if you'll stick with me, first we're going to get started with the Hebrew words of the day, which are for a uh, stiff. Stiff is koshe, koshe, which is right to left, kuf, shin, he, Hebrew strong 7186, which is from the word Hebrew strong 7185, koshe, which means stiff. We have... Um, Orif, orif, which is neck, ayin, resh, hey, Hebrew strong, 6203. And then we couldn't do um, a stiffened neck without a hardened heart. So I included the word for heart, which is nivab, and that is lamet biet. And excuse my little Hebrew writing, my um, hands were a little shaky this morning. <laughs> so what is the definition? We're we'll take a look at the stiff neck. Stubborn. Inflexibility, obstinate, com contemptuous, pig-headed, proud, unretract, untractable, not to be led. The Yehudi, which uh, we call Jews, idea was with whom um, the ox was most useful and common of domestic animals. The plow was drawn by two oxen, as the plowman required but one hand to guide the plow he carried the other, in the other, an ox goad. This was a light pole shod with an iron spike. With this, he would prick the oxen upon the hind legs to increase their speed and upon the neck to turn or to keep a straight course. If a ox was hard to control or stubborn, it was called hard of neck or stiff neck. The figure was used in scripture to express the stubborn, unretractable spirit of a people not responsive to the guiding of Yahuwah, our Almighty, our Creator, Almost High. Um, a hardened heart, the definition, unfilling, pitiless, soulless, stony, right? You get the stony heart. You don't care for others, just that heart of stone. Medically, um, when we look at the stiff neck, there's a condition that's called nuchal rigidity or torticollis, <laughs> which is the tightness and inability to move the neck muscles. It is con a common problem, torticollis can occur at any age and is often um, begins slowly and usually reaches a plateau. Um, Hard-hearted, medically, a hardened heart is called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a disease in which the heart muscle becomes thickened, making it harder for the heart to pump blood. You've heard the term, the murderer killed in cold blood, no feeling, no remorse, no care, just hard, just hard, right? The heart is also your conscience, right? Your innermost. So let's take a look at scripture because it's stick with me. Um, this might be about 30 minutes or so, but hopefully I explain this in a good way. Shemoth, Exodus chapter 7, verse 12 through 13. And they, each one, threw down his rod, and they became serpents, but the rod of Edom swallowed up their rods. There is the magicians, the, the magicians of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them as Yahuwah had said. We see the serpent as Satan, and it shows that even he has to obey Yahuwah. 7.22, Exodus 7.22, And the magicians of Mitzrayim, which is Egypt, did the same thing with their magic, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. And he did not listen to them as Yahuwah had said. Exodus 8.15, 
And when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them as Yahuwah had said. 8.19 The magicians then said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of Elohim, but the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not listen to them as Yahuwah had said. How many times, right? How many times does it take? Very hard-hearted and stiff-necked. Chapter 9, verse 34 through 35. And Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased, yet he sinned again and he hardened his heart, he and his servants. Chapter 14, verse 8. And Yahuwah hardened the heart of Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitzrayim, Egypt. And Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitzrayim, and he pursued the children of Yasharel, Israel. They went out with a high hand. Shemoth, Exodus, chapter 32, verse 9. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Moses, I have seen this people, and see, it is a stiff-necked people. Shemoth, Exodus, chapter 33, verse 3 through 5. To a land flowing with milk and honey, for I do not go up in your midst, because you are a stiff-necked people, lest I consume you on the way. And when the people heard this evil word, they mourned, and no one put on his ornaments. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Say to the children of Yasharel, You are a stiff-necked people. Should I go up in your midst for one moment? I shall consume you, and now take off your ornaments, and I shall know what to do to you. Devraim, which is Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 30. But Sihon, sovereign of Heshbon, would not let us pass over. For Yahuwah your Elohim hardened his spirit and strengthened his heart to give him into your hand as it is this day. Chapter 9, verse 6. And you shall know that Yahuwah your Elohim is not giving you this good land to possess because of your righteousness, for you are a stiff necked people. Verse 12 through 13. Then Yahuwah said to me, Arise, go down quickly from here, for your people, whom you brought out of Mitzrayim, Egypt, have acted corruptly. They have quickly turned aside from the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded image. And Yahuwah spoke to me, saying, I have seen this people, and look, they are a stiff necked people. Chapter 10 of Deuteronomy, verse 15 through 16. Yahuwah delighted only in your fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them. You above all peoples, as is today, and you shall circumcise the foreskin of your heart and harden your neck no more. First Shemuel 6.6, 6, to Samuel. And why do you harden your hearts? As the Misrites and Pharaoh hardened their hearts, when he had severely dealt with them, they did not send them away, and they went. Second Kings 17, 13 to 14. And Yahuwah warned Yasharel and Yahuda, which is Israel and Judah, through all of his Nebaim, his prophets. And every seer saying, turn back from your evil ways and guard my commands and my laws according to all the Torah which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the Nebaim, the prophets. But they did not listen and harden their necks like the necks of their fathers, who did not put their trust in Yahuwah, their Elohim. Yeshayahu, which is Isaiah chapter 63, verse 17. O Yahuwah, why do you make us stray from your ways and harden our heart from your reverence? Turn back for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. Yomriyahu, which is Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 25 through 26. From the day that your fathers came out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, until this day, I have even sent you to you, all my servants, the Nebaim, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. But they did not obey me or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck. They did evil more than their fathers. Yermiyahu, Jeremiah, chapter 19, verse 14 to 15. And when Yermiyahu returned from Topheth, where Yahuwah had sent him to Nabi, prophecy, prophesy, he stood in the courtyard of the house of Yahuwah and said to all the people, Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yasharel, See, I am bringing on this city and on all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have stiffened their necks so as not to hear my words. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3 through 4 and he said to me son of man I am sending you to the children of Yasharel to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me they and their fathers have transgressed against me until this day and the children are a stiff of face and hard of heart to whom I am sending you shall say to them thus said the Adon Yahuwah master Yahuwah 
in Daniel, Daniel chapter 5, verse 19, this is where he's talking about Nebuchadnezzar. And because of the greatness which he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wanted, he executed, and whomever he wanted, he kept alive, and whomever he raised up, and whomever he wanted, he made low. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was so strong as to act proudly, he was put down from his throne of reign, and they took his esteem from him. Then he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. He was given grass to eat like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of the Shemayim, the heaven, till he knew that the Most High, Elah, is ruler in the reign of men, and he appoints over it whomever he wants. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 16 through 18. But they and their fathers acted proudly and hardened their necks. They did not obey your commands, and they refused to obey, and they remembered not your wonders that you did among them and hardened their necks, and in rebellion they appointed a leader to return to their bondage. But you are a forgiving Allah, showing favor and compassionate, patient, and of great kindness, and did not forsake them. Even when they made a molded calf for themselves and said, This is your mighty one that brought you up out of Mitzrayim, and worked great blasphemies. Chapter 9, verse 29 of Nehemiah, and warned them to bring them back to your Torah. But they acted proudly and did not obey your commands and sinned against your right rulings, which if a man does, he shall live by them. And they gave the rebellious shoulder and hardened their necks and would not hear. Sehalim, Psalm chapter uh, 95, verse eight through 11. Do not harden your hearts as in Meribah, and as in the day of Mitz, uh, Masihim in the wilderness. When your fathers tried me and have proved me, they saw my work. For 40 years I was loathed with a generation and said they are a people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways as I swore in my wrath if they enter in my rest and then it's dot 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 so I don't see like the finishing on that sentence there um, or that scripture in uh, verse 11 um, it's the father saying as I swore in my wrath if they enter into my rest dot 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 Zechariah, Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 12. Uh, the word of Yahuwah came to Zechariah and Bethel, sent Sar Etzer and um, Rijimelech and his men to pray before Yahuwah. Uh, they were speaking to the Kohanim, which are the priests, and uh, they who, who belonged to the house of Yahuwah, but they refused to listen. So, verse 12. And they made in their hearts like flint against hearing the Torah and the words which Yahuwah Sabaoth has sent by his Ruhah, his spirit, through the former Nebaim, the prophets. Therefore, great wrath came from Yahuwah Sabaoth, Yahuwah of hosts. Mishle, which is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24 through 31. Because I called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one inclined, and you spurned all my counsel and would not yield to my reproof. Let me also laugh at your calamity, mock when your dread comes, when your dread comes like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, let them call on me, but I answer not, let them seek me, but, I, but not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the reverence of Yahuwah, they did not accept my counsel, they despised all my reproof, therefore let them eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own counsels. Mishle, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 14. Baruch, blessed is the man who always reveres, but he who hardens his heart falls into evil. I encourage you to read this proverb, chapter 28. It is talking about the rich versus the poor, the wicked versus the righteous. He who turns away his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. Chapter 29, verse 11 of Proverbs. A fool lets out all his breath, but the wise calms it down afterward. Eov, Job, chapter 9, verse 3 through 4. If one wanted to dispute with him, he would not answer him. One time out of a thousand, wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him and is at peace? That's a question. Divri Hayamim, 2 Chronicles, chapter 30, verse 8. Now, do not 
stiffen your neck like your father's. Stretch forth the hand to Yahuwah and come to his Mikdash, which he has Kodesh forever. And serve Yahuwah, your Elohim, so that his burning wrath turns away from you. Chapter 36, verse 13 of Second Chronicles. And he also rebelled against sovereign Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by Elohim, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel. Verse 15 through 16. And Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them, for he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they were mocking the messengers of Elohim and despising his words and scoffing at his Nabim, his prophets, until the wrath of Yahuwah arose against his people, until there was no healing. And there goes the uh, lawnmower, so hopefully it doesn't drown out the sound. <laughs> First Esdras, chapter 1, verse 48, and we'll try to speak a little bit louder just in case. And after Sovereign Nebuchadnezzar had made him swear by the name of Yahuwah, he broke his neck and his heart. He transgressed the laws of Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel. Yobalim, which is Jubilees, chapter 1, verse 7, And you shall write for yourself all these words which I declare to you this day. For I know their rebellion and their stiff neck, before I bring them into the land of which I swore to their fathers, to Abraham, to Yetchak, to Jacob, saying, Unto your seed I shall give a land flowing with milk and honey. Chapter 1, verse 22. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, I know their unruliness and their thoughts and their stiff neck, and they shall not be obedient till they confess their own sin and the sin of their fathers. Tobayah, which is Tobit, chapter 11, verse 9. Then Hanah ran out and fell upon the neck of her son and said to him, Seeing I have seen you, my son, from now on I'm content to die. And they both wept. Toby had put the um, fish gall on his father, Tobiah's eyes that he could see. We could say they fell upon their necks because they were spiritually blinded, right? They were stubborn, but once the vision had been restored, they could see clearly and their neck was no longer stiff. Could be, I'm not sure, but <laughs> it's a thought. Baruch, um, chapter two, verse 30 through 35. For I knew that they would not hear me because they are a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves and shall know that I am Yahuwah their Elohim. For I shall give them a heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think, think up my name and turn off from their stiff neck and from their wicked de um, deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers who sinned before Yahuwah. And I shall bring them into the land which I promised with an oath to their fathers, Abraham, Ishak, and Jacob. And they shall be my people, and I shall no longer drive my people out of Yasharel, out of the land that I have given to them. And I shall make an everlasting covenant with them to be their Elohim, and they shall be my people, and I shall no longer drive my people out of Yasharel, out of the land that I have given them. Marcos, which is Mark, chapter 6, verse 52. For they did not understand about the loaves, because their heart was hardened. Those that don't follow in his ways... His commands are spiritually blind, thus leading to not having wisdom and understanding to discern the message. Marcos, Mark, chapter 8, verse 17. And Yashua, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? He is our bread, right? He is our the bread of life. Masae, which is Acts chapter 7, verse 51 through 53. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Ruha Hakadesh, which is the Holy Spirit or set apart spirit, as your fathers did. You also do. Which of the Nabim, the prophets, did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who before announced the coming of the righteous one. Of you, of who you now have become the betrayers and murderers who received the Torah as it was ordained by the messengers, but did not watch over it. They did or do not keep it. Acts chapter 19, verse 8 through 9. And having gone into the congregation, he spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the reign of Elohim. But when some were hardened and did not believe, speaking evil of the way before the crowd, he withdrew from them and separated the Talmudim, the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannos. Um, Tyrannos um, could also mean the tyrants, um, ruler, Strong 5181, the sovereign and the school of which Shaul taught the gospel 
um, from the Philistines. Romaim, which is Romans chapter 9, verse 17 through 18. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For the same purpose I have raised you up to show my power in you and that my name be declared in all the earth. So then he favors whom he wants and hardens. He hardens whom he wants. Ivrim, which is Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 through 8. Therefore, as the Ruha HaKadosh, the set apart spirit, says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart, as in the rebellion, in the day of the trial, in the wilderness. And then um, verses 9 through 19. Give me just a second. I didn't write all that down because it was a lot. Where your fathers tried me, proved me, and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was loath with that generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts and they have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, look out brothers, lest there be in any of you a wicked heart of unbelief and falling away from the living Elohim. But encourage one another daily while it is still called today, lest any of you be hardened by the deceit of sin. For we have become partakers of Mashiach, our Messiah, if we hold fast the beginning of our trust, firm to the end, while it is said today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Was it not all who came out of Mitzrayim led by Moshe, Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he loath forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, who cor whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear? that he would not enter into his rest, but to those who did not obey. So we see that they were unable to enter in because of unbelief, their stiff necks and their hardened hearts. Okay, I'm getting there, almost done. Ivrim chapter four, verse seven. He again defines a certain day, today saying through Dawid, which is David, so much later as it has been said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, Verse 8, for if Yahshua, or Yahushua, Joshua, established them in rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. Hesson, which is Revelation chapter 9, verse 19 through 21, for the authority of the horses is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents having heads. So think about their mouth, right? The tongue, the speech. Horses have a bridle in their mouth, right, to control them. And with them they do harm, and the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship the demons and idols of gold and of silver and of brass and of stone and of wood, which are neither able to see nor to hear nor to walk. And they did not repent of their murders, nor of their drug sorceries, nor of their whoring, nor of their thefts. So we see the mouth to tell is like the beginning to the end, right? They're, they're beginning to their end, which could be false teaching. So let's take a look at what it means to repent, right? We hear the word repent is to feel or express sincere penitence about wrongdoing and sin, which is accompanied by commitment to an actual action to show and prove a change from within, right? From deep within, there's a change. It is a positive emotion as it makes one learn about the mistake, the sin, and vow not to repeat it going forward. In Ivri, which is Hebrew, repent means to return. Teshavu, uva, teshavu, I think that's right. And that's a promise to a physical land and restoration. A stiff neck can make it hard to get any rest, right? We know that physically. You've got a stiff neck and you're dealing with some pains and whatever, it's hard to, it's hard to rest, right? So think about that spiritually. Physically and spiritually, well, let's take a look at a spiritual cure. Well, Mr. Cicada saying hello. <laughs> we only attain this by admitting we've, we've, been, a, we've been stiff necked and hard hearted. We repent and we return following in his way by seeking him, knocking, praying, spending time getting to know him, transforming out from the worldly system and into his righteous image like the ox that wore a yoke and could be stubborn Yahuwah, Yahshua, Yahshua HaMashiach, our Messiah carried that yoke for us he would take that stony heart and give us a new heart of flesh 
He never did away with his commands in law or instruction. He is the beginning and the end. He made the blood sacrifice of himself that was the ultimate sacrifice, that we wouldn't be offering up lambs and goats out of works every time we sinned. He was the ultimate sacrifice for us, but never did he do away with his commands and his Torah. So I hope that you got something out of this. I'm just sharing my studies with you. I refer back to the um, scripture that I gave you and read it for yourself. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Shalom, shalom.